Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to Depression Quest. We have just accepted a kitten and we are now cat owners. And she has, um, she has begun to trust me and affectionately been following me around and fun things in that last paragraph right there. It's late Friday afternoon, and quitting time is just around the corner. A bright, clear day is giving way to a still, temperate evening. You can hear your coworkers all around you anxiously making plans for their evenings and weekends, but you're really looking forward to just going home and resting after what's turned out to be a very long and taxing work week. And just before the end of your shift, you get a call from Alex. It seems a group of your mutual friends are heading out to a nearby pub for dinner and drinks to celebrate the end of the week, and they want to know if you'd like to come along. You tentatively tell her that you're emotionally exhausted from the work week and a social outing like that would just take too much out of you today. You encourage her to go and have a good time since you know it's been a while since she's gone out with friends, but the effort feels futile since you know that she isn't going to go without you. A couple hours later, the two of you find yourselves in a familiar position on the couch, watching comedy shows on Netflix, a box of pizza open on the coffee table in front of you. As you look across the couch at her, you start to feel anxious. You feel bad about effectively forcing the two of you to stay in tonight, again. While you're always appreciative of your partner's efforts to take your feelings into account and help make sure you're socially comfortable, you sincerely worry that you're holding her back from enjoying a more fulfilling relationship. While she does seem to enjoy spending time with you, as the two of you sit in, comfort in comfortable, almost contented silence watching old shows you you've each seen two or three times before, your ever-increasing fear that your relationship is becoming one-sided weighs more and more heavily on you. You feel more than ever like a burden or a ward to her, and it's virtually impossible for you to see what value you could possibly offer to her in return. Worst of all, this nagging fear has made you feel more self-conscious than ever, withdrawing ever inwards and you've started to pull away even from Alex herself. That is an issue too, is that when you overthink a lot of the times, uh, I actually sometimes still overthink a lot. Um, but, some, but it's easy for me to just kind of push it aside sometimes. But uh, in this situation, when you overthink a lot, you feel, yeah, like it's, like it's like it says right there that you feel more self-conscious about yourself. And then you think of all the worst possible outcomes you could think of. And no good outcomes would ever come out of those outcomes that you've thought of. And it's just, it, you just envelop around those outcomes and you become entirely consumed within them. So one, you know that despite the bad times your girlfriend sincerely loves you. Relationships are a two-way street and you resolve to always be there for her like she has been for you. Tell Alex how important she is to you and enjoy your evening. Ask Alex if she's happy with your relationship. Don't say anything you're already worried about her being upset with you. In that situation I would ask if she's happy with the relationship. But then at the same time, I would also not say anything because I would be afraid of the reaction and response. But I, but I would eat me away and I would still ask. Oh, 33%. It's always at 33%. For Netflix. You look over at Alex, who hasn't noticed you watching her yet, and you try to parse the expression on her face. You worry that it's one of sheer boredom and bare tolerance. You wonder if she's thinking about all the fun things she could have been doing tonight if she wasn't trapped on this couch with you. Ordering from one of the same three takeout places that you always order from, a sense of disappointing her creeps over you as you picture what the night could have been if you had just accepted the invitation she had made earlier. I know this is a pretty boring Friday night for you. Are you really happy being with me? Being like this? She turns to look at you, forehead wrinkled. Why do you ask me that so often? I ask her that often? Uh, anyways, I, I don't know. You feel her body stiffen and pull away from yours just a little. 
Well, I mean, you start, but are unable to try and think of how to answer. It's probably silly, but it's reassuring when I hear that we're on the same page. I want to make sure that I'm right for you. Uh, three. I know it's not what you'd usually be up to. Uh, four. I don't know. I guess I get kind of worried that you're getting bored sometimes. Five. Never mind. Uh, I would do this. Just kind of be worried. Uh, let's see. I am still very depressed. Alex sighs. Look, if that were the case, I would let you know. I don't think you're boring. You're more of a homebody than I am. I'm learning how to deal with that. Deal with it? You think, repeating it in your mind. Does she see you as a problem to be dealt with? You try to pick her reply apart in your mind and all of your conclusions lead to your previous worry that you're holding her back. You begin thinking that the phrasing was chosen without too much deliberation and that despite her attempts at reassuring you, the slip of the tongue revealed her true feelings. Um, actually this is an issue too, um, with, uh, with the phrasing. Uh, I don't, I don't like it when people don't really understand before, uh, that, of how I felt, um, in the past. It, it was just, I was, I was very shy, very quiet, very isolated, um, you would say, just to myself a lot. And and I guess I took that into account to now, where sometimes um, I have no idea what to really phrase things. I don't know how to phrase things well without making it sound wrong or people taking it the wrong way, I guess. But that's just me. It, it, <laughs> something I'm slowly dealing with myself. As you picture how much fun she would be having right now, if you had only accepted her invitation and managed to somehow get over your reservations and anxi anxieties. Despite not knowing how you would go about that, she cuddles back up to you. Thanks for putting up with me, you say, staring at the TV without actually watching it. She sighs in response. I'm still very depressed. It is a breezy Sunday afternoon. Ooh, that's a nice cup of coffee. You've allowed Amanda, an old friend from school that is in town for the weekend, to talk you into leaving the house for coffee and catch up. You meet her in a small cafe and talk about what you've been up to since you've last seen each other. And you can't help but feel like they are a lot more accomplished and interesting than you are while listening to them talk about their life after school. When it's your turn to brief them on your activities, you feel anxious and ashamed and give a very abbreviated version. You try to talk about your job as little as possible and you feel incredibly boring while you describe despite her expressing sincere interest in you and your life. Amanda has known you long enough to read your mood and tone of voice. She leans into ask she leans into you to ask a question while gently touching your hand. You look of genuine concern on her face. What's wrong? Do you suggest a change of location and confide her honestly? Test the waters and open up a little, hoping she'll understand, insisting that nothing is wrong and change the subject. Defensively ask what she means by that. Notice that your hands are shaking. Since we are old friends, and she does seem, and she is expressing concern or um, sincere interest in me and my life, I would uh, test the waters and open up a little, hoping she'll understand. Still very depressed. Though you find it hard to lay out how you are feeling lately to other people, you decide to test the waters on opening up to Amanda. She's always been easy to talk to and you feel like it's possible that she might be understanding of what's been going on with you, even if you think it doesn't make sense sometimes. You begin to dance around the subject, dipping your toe into the pool to test the water. Surprisingly, she catches on quickly and is even able to guess what you may say next. She asks the right question, leading you to elaborate on your emotional state. You apologize profusely the entire time, feeling like you're being obnoxious, but she reassures you that you aren't burdening her. Amanda reveals to you that her mother suffers from clinical depression, 
and that she has spent many nights talking her through very similar feelings. She mentions that therapy and medication have helped her tremendously, and suggests you give it a try. You fight it and feel somewhat like a charity case, but she tells you that she'll get the number of her mother's therapist and email it to you as soon as she can. Afterward, conversation drifts back to small talk and shared hobbies, and you spend a pleasant afternoon together. For the rest of the day, you find yourself wondering if therapy or medication can really help you. If you have an illness or are simply complaining too much, and remember horror stories you've heard about antidepressants. You're not sure about what you'll do if she remembers to email you the number for the therapist, but you secretly hope that she'll forget about it so you can avoid dealing with it at all. Um, the last paragraph with the horror stories about antidepressants—it's—it's it's about all the side effects that、uh, that comes with taking these medications. The new ones that they have out are SSRIs. There's serotonin、um, reuptakes in the brain because I guess from studies and research they have. Found that people with depression or are, are usually lacking serotonin. That there's less serotonin in in the brain in the brain, so it's a chemical imbalance,、uh, as they say. But taking antidepressants will help you, though. It will help you, and more or less. Sometimes you might not need it after a long time. After taking it for a while, you you can sometimes sometimes you're able to get off of it. But it's really hard because because you're not sure if the medication or is it your thoughts that really counteract how you feel. So. It's pretty much up with the therapist and、uh, psychiatrists that really look into medication adjustments and see how you are actually doing. But it is a good start to to just you know therapy、um, and medication is what I'm saying. It's a glaringly sunny Monday. And one of the few days that your brother Malcolm is in town and free long enough for you two to actually see each other, you have a dental appointment that day. But you make plans for him to pick you up afterward. Your appointment takes a little longer than expected because your dentist tells you that you've started grinding your teeth in your sleep to a worrying degree. Given how nearly everything in your life has been feeling enormous and stressful lately, this doesn't come as a surprise to you. He suggests that you try to reduce your stress levels and fit you for a night guard. It feels awkward and too big for your mouth, and you feel embarrassed looking at your puffed-out face in the mirror with it in. You finish up the appointment in a hurry and leave about a half an hour overdue for meeting your always punctual brother in the parking lot. You finish up as quickly as possible and leave the building to scan the parking lot for your brother's car, but you don't see his old Civic anywhere. You pass by a blue Camaro and jump as it beeps at you, causing you to jump in surprise. It takes you a moment for you to realize it, but it's Malcolm in the driver's seat. You hop in the passenger seat and compliment him on his new ride, and he mentions that it's a perk of a promotion he and he's recently obtained at work. He starts telling you about how much more money he's making, how his career is really taking off, and how he's starting to look at houses with his wife soon. You clutch the bag containing the night guard in your hand and feel yourself clenching your teeth as you think of. Your crummy apartment, and how long it's been since you've been able to take a day off work without having to worry about making ends meet. He's only two years older than you, but it feels like he's eons ahead of you in every other aspect of your lives. So, he asks, "How did your appointment go? Did you get drilled full of hose or what?" A sense of shame creeps over you. Tell him about the night guard and why you need it. Lie. Tell him it was a routine. Routine cleaning. Tell him about your tooth grinding problem, but not the stress causing it. Laugh about your dorky night guard with your brother. I mean, he's my brother. I would, I would tell him about the night guard and why I need it. I am still depressed. 
Actually, I guess I have been grinding my teeth in my sleep too much. Oh yeah? Like a mask? Isn't that stressful? I mean, is that a stress thing? Yeah, I guess. I've been having kind of a hard time lately. I'm sorry to hear that, kiddo. Malcolm glances over at you. You stare out the window, feeling suddenly self-conscious as you watch houses and cars zip by. He asks, anything you want to talk about? I don't know. It's hard to talk about. Trying to figure out where to start feels like trying to pin down something flying around your head. Except it's one of millions of tiny bits of static flying around in there. It's more than talking about specific events because there are times you feel miserable without any specific catalyst to point to. It is a con it's a constant din of noise in the back of your head that never goes away. It only ever gets turned down. That is actually true. When um. With, with a lot of thoughts going in your mind, you feel like your mind is being overwhelmed with so much information that becomes nothing. You you can't think of anything, you nothing to really think about, you there's nothing to grasp onto in your mind to really speak it out. You just become you just don't know anymore. You try to explain all this to Malcolm. When he, and he asks a lot of questions without judgment in an effort to help you give words to this jumbled up mass of negative emotion. The two of you end up getting takeout and going back to your place and talk late into the night. Your kitten takes a liking to him really quickly, and despite the serious conversation going on around her, she rolls around between the two of you. After a long back and forth, he asks, is there anything I can do to help you with this? Don't tell mom, okay? Yeah, she wouldn't, un she wouldn't get it. He replies with a slight laugh. Does talking about it help? Sometimes, kind of. Well... Okay, know that you can call me anytime you need. He rests one of his enormous hands on your shoulder. You'll get through this, kiddo. I'm not very depressed anymore. I am depressed. Interaction is exhausting and you are becoming more and more withdrawn. And everyone, thank you for watching again um, this video. If you guys enjoyed, if you guys... Um, would be kind enough to like this video, subscribe to me, and just share this video to everyone to show awareness. I would appreciate it a lot, and it would help me too. Thank you, everybody, again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.